Are you an American who want to travel to Russia to explore Moscow, St. Petersburg, meet beautiful women, try Russian food? Well, I have bad news for you. You definitely should not go in Russia right now. And I have a really good point which might kind of question you your decision to go. If you're the first time on my channel, my name is Zach the Russian. I'm 22 years old Russian who left Russia because of the war against Ukraine. And today I'm going to tell you about the case of Ksenia Karelina, a 33 years old double citizen of the United States and Russia who got sentenced in Russia for 12 years in prison for donating 51 point eight dollars to a ukrainian humanitarian fund that helps children and older people who suffer because of the war against ukraine Ksenia Karelina, originally from Russia, moved to the United States a long time ago as a work and travel participant, later got married with a Russian guy who was an American citizen, stayed in the United States, divorced the guy, started to date with another, a pretty famous boxer, Chris Van Herden. During winter 2023, Ksenia and her boyfriend Chris went to Istanbul, Turkey, to basically celebrate Christmas over there together, just a trip together. And Chris Van Herden decided to make a gift to his beloved Ksenia. And the gift was a trip to her hometown to see her grandparents. Ksenia flew to Yekaterinburg and on a customs control, she got stopped and detained by FSB. They were questioning her for a couple of hours. They have checked her phone without her permission, they found something and they decided to keep her phone and her documents at their office for an indefinite period of time. They've also forbidden Ksenia from leaving Yekaterinburg and basically they were watching over her during all her visits. After a couple of days, while Ksenia was waiting for someone outside of some kind of movie theater, she got arrested for allegedly swearing in public, which is a freaking joke. Nobody in Russia gets arrested for swearing in public. And she got arrested not by just regular police, but actually by FSB. And eventually she was put in local jail for 14 days but as soon as she got out of jail she got charged with freaking treason and eventually sentenced later for 12 years of jail not only she got sentenced to 12 years of jail she also has to pay 300 thousands of rubles and she even got lucky because the prosecutor was asking for 15 years of prison for Xenia. and all this because those FSB who took her phone at the passport control and kept it for that period of time. They've been through her phone, they've looked pretty much everywhere, and they opened Venmo. And they've seen that in one of the receipts in Venmo, almost two years ago, when the war started, 24th of February 2022, Xenia donated 518 American dollars to a humanitarian organization helping refugees and helping those who help wounded at the front lines. It's a Ukrainian nonprofit organization called Razum for Ukraine. It's they're pretty big on Instagram. So basically, she found a Ukrainian nonprofit who was gathering money to help children and elder people to evacuate, to provide them with medical help, to provide them with ba basically just humanitarian help. She donated 51.8 dollars and eventually got charged with for 12 years in jail for that. Her ex-husband, the one she married to become an American citizen, said this. And perhaps the most upsetting thing about the entire situation is that Ksusha has never been involved in politics, not even remotely. I can assure you that none of Ksusha's acquaintances would have ever imagined such a situation, not even in the worst nightmares, simply because it's not about her. She always tried to help people, emotionally, physically. It doesn't matter, but definitely not to harm anyone. And now, to see her being labeled as a traitor to her country, even though she has always been proud to be Russian, makes it doubly painful. Polina Graysman, the founder of the project Rostraf, and basically the human rights activist, told this about the whole situation. Every person is free to choose whom or what to support. And the state of Ukraine is not a terrorist or extremist organization. I fear that all US citizens should seriously reconsider traveling to Russia, because no one knows when or for what reason they might be detained, only to become bargain chips for Putin to exchange for war criminals, captured spies or murderers. It seems like the trend of taking foreign citizens hostage in Russia is becoming increasingly popular. And I wouldn't advise US citizens to rely on the hope of an exchange, because it might take a very, very long time, years, 
even during which they would be spending all the time in the Russian prison. So basically the main reason you fellow Americans or pretty much anyone from the Western countries should not go to Russia because you might be just taken, captured and be just as a source of exchange for Putin to exchange for all those killers, spies, war criminals, pretty much everyone who they've got in the Western prisons. Not only you might get arrested, in my opinion, it's just morally not right to travel to Russia at this point. It's basically like traveling to Nazi Germany during the time when Hitler came to power. Because basically, every time you buy something in Russia, every time you buy a sandwich, every time you pay for a dish in a restaurant, you're paying at least 20% of tax for an added value, an analog of sale tax in the US. And guess where all this money is going to right now in Russia? It's going to the government. And guess what government does? They fund the military machines to kill Ukrainians. I bet by this point, even those people who are anti-Ukraine understand that Ukraine is doing the right thing. They're just really afraid to admit this. Moreover, there are problems with debit and credit cards. Basically, you have to bring cash in Russia. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to pay for nothing in Russia because SWIFT is cut off because of sanctions. Basically, none of the American or Western cars are going to work inside of Russia. Bring cash which is dangerous. Well, it's not like a lot of people really get smugged, but if you go somewhere outside of Moscow or St. Petersburg with a lot of cash, I don't think it's really safe for you. It's just my thought process. I know there's going to be a bunch of people who are not going to agree with me and going to say, no, Russia is the safest place. There is no gay people. There is no transgenders. Russia is a savior of white civilization. Well, good luck. I mean, Nazis are always going to be there, I guess, even in democratic societies. But for those who just want to travel and to see the other country they've never seen before, explore their Russian culture or maybe meet some friends or pen pals over there. I really think now is not the best time. When? Well, at least when Putin's dead. Because basically Russia is Putin right now. Everything that's what's happening inside of Russia is because Putin wants it. When Putin is gone, I'm not saying it's going to be different right away, but I'm pretty sure it's not going to be as dangerous for Westerns to come to Russia as of right now. Uh, that was me, Zach the Russian. Thank you for watching this video. I hope I was able to change somebody's mind. As usual, don't forget to support Ukraine. And thank you for watching this video. See you in the next ones.